So a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned I was going to do an unboxing of my Starlink satellite receiver internet system and uh, show the setup and the install and all that good stuff. But I changed my mind simply because there's a lot of unboxing videos on the internet and reviews of the setup and all that stuff. So I will talk about my experience and the performance because I know there's people in our area that this will be relevant to that haven't had another alternative besides the one alternative that we have who shall remain nameless. I've, this is my third uh, time making this video because I decided I should keep the name of the competitor out of it. So, I, I received my internet, uh, Starlink internet receiver on Monday. Got a message from FedEx, your package is here, went and picked it up. I was very excited because when I went on the internet and uh, ordered this thing, it said two to six weeks. And it showed up in less than two weeks, so that's great. Um, so, I set it up on Monday, and it was crazy easy. Very, very simple. Everything comes in a box, already assembled, already. The only thing you have to do is snap the disc, or the dish, I should say, into the tripod stand. And um, so I did that, I snapped the stand on, brought the disc out onto the back deck, ran the cable in under the back deck door, plugged everything in, and waited. And within a couple of minutes, the dish started to move, searching for satellites, and it stopped moving, pointing directly at my house. And that's when I realized it's not going to work on the back deck because it wanted to face somewhat northeast. And the deck is in the southwest corner, so I had to take it back to the front and put it out of my wife's flower bed where it had a clear view of the sky and uh, plugged it back in, and uh, she fired up in no time. The white light came on indicating that we had service and uh, that that all took about three minutes you know the second time then the setup maybe took a minute you go into your Wi-Fi uh, connections on your phone and you give it a name and a password and then you disconnect and reconnect with that name and you're in business literally maybe a minute total or less if you've seen it done before so five minute total setup time then I did my speed test immediately <laughs> before I browsed before I searched anything before I tried a video I did a speed test and uh, keeping in mind I still had my I almost said the name I had my competitor internet provider still up and running in the house so I did a speed test with the old provider and then I did a speed test with Starlink and it was amazing uh, previously we we struggled to to get 28 megabytes per second download speeds and anywhere from 0.7 to 2.7 upload speeds a really good day was 30 download and 3 upload with a latency time of anywhere from 280 to 300 milliseconds was pretty normal a really really good day would be 180 so then we did the speed test uh, with the Starlink and boom right out of the box 180 megabytes per second download speeds and 30 upload with 60 to 70 uh, latency time milliseconds now I did the test over and over again and it seemed like the latency kind of settled out at, a, at an average of about 100 to 120 milliseconds uh, uploads remained around 28 to 30 and download remained around 160 to 180 now that was about eight o'clock in the evening on Monday well, so we're talking three times, sorry, six, six times the speed, uh, download speeds, and about 10 times the upload. That's correct. Six times the download speeds and 10 times the upload, which it, like, come on, if we can do that, why aren't we? Right? Why can the other provider not come even close? And the bigger issue, and I'll be honest, I would have stuck with the other provider had their speeds been consistent. I would have settled for less than 30. I would have settled for 20 download and, and two upload. And the latency time, I could live with that. All of that. Had it been consistent. But not only were the speeds inconsistent, but my service dropped anywhere from five to 10 times a day. 
and we would just have to wait for it to come back. We could reset the modem sometimes. That would work. Sometimes it wouldn't. Um, sometimes I would uh, have to call in. They told me I should call in every time. It's 45 minutes to an hour every time, five to ten times a day. I do have a job and a family. I can't just <laughs> be on the phone with internet support all day, every day, just to have internet. And even if I could afford it, who wants to do that? So it's not the point. It's not the point. This isn't about my previous experience. It's about my current experience. So um, inconsistency in speeds and in service. Leave the past experience there. We'll talk a little bit more about Starlink. So the speeds were well in excess of five times. And so now the question is reliability and consistency, right? Will it stay this good? Well, keep in mind with our previous provider, we never made it in the last year to, uh, it just has been consistently getting worse. If we'd had a bad week or a bad month, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. But it had been, um, started off decent three years ago and just steadily went into a decline. The company was sold and purchased by another company and it got worse. And then they offered a higher speed and I thought maybe that would fix our problem. So I signed up for that, another 10 bucks a month and the problem got even worse. And the customer service started to really suffer. And um, so, it's, it's available. Now, I know that uh, some people that are, we've never had uh, the option of fiber internet, so we don't, we don't know what that's like. Um, I've experienced it at some other places where it's just lightning fast. This isn't that fast, obviously. But it does everything we need it to do. If you're a, you're a business and you got 50 users, maybe you need that. But that's not the market that Starlink is competing in. Uh, they've said they're they're not going after the major urban centers and uh, where all the big businesses are. Um, that's pretty much wrapped up with the fiber guys, and they're doing a good job of that. And it's they're going after the rural demographic. There's millions and millions of people in North America. Never mind globally. Never mind in third world countries. Right? Like there's a lot of people that don't have access to that side. So anyway, that's what they're competing for. They're competing for the urban, the rural market. And uh, that's where I am. I'm rural. And there's absolutely no service out where we are without without this. So long story short, um, five times, six times the download speeds, ten times the upload speeds, half to a third of the latency times. It just works. It just works really well. Three days in, this is what I was getting at. Sorry, I digressed. Three days in, we haven't had a drop signal yet. Now, we haven't... Yesterday was very overcast. The cloud cover did not seem to have any impact on it. Today it's clear. We haven't had any snow yet. We haven't had any rain yet. So the experiment continues. But all that aside, we haven't had three good days with our previous provider yet. Not in the last six months to a year. We haven't had one good day, honestly. And when I say good day, I mean uninterrupted service. I'm not even talking about massive speeds. I'm talking about uninterrupted service. So now, you know, we, we have... Um, one of the questions I had when I ordered this system is, can I hook up my other two Wi-Fi routers to it? Because we had one on the house, and then I ran a hard line to the garage, and then I ran another hard line from the garage to the kennel. So I was, I was running three different Wi-Fi routers at the same time, all coming in from one provider. Well, I wanted to continue doing that. I wanted one install in the house, and then just plug in the old ones well, and there was an auxiliary port on the Starlink modem I plugged it in to the line going to the garage and the garage and the kennel fired up I went and did speed tests out there same thing so it just works fantastic the network names for the garage and the, and the kennel stay what they were the passwords stay what they were it's just a different source coming in um, one of the things that I've also noticed is the signal's a lot stronger. So it's a good quality modem that came from Starlink. I can I can move further away from the modem. And I actually installed it right dead center in the house. It's in the middle of the uh, basement ceiling or the main floor, floor uh, between the joists. So it's dead center. I couldn't do that with my other modem. I had to put it where we generally spent time, in the living areas, because if it was in the center of the house, the corners of the house wouldn't get it. 
Well, now I can not only get it in the corners of the house, but I can get it outside. I haven't really, it's been minus 30, so I haven't been testing to see how far I can go outside. But regardless, it's a good quality modem, and for $650, you would expect so. And then in terms of the numbers, it was $800. $800, that, was, uh, that included the cost of the hardware plus your first month of service. Moving forward, it's supposed to be $130 a month, so I guess there's some taxes in there as well to bring it up to uh, uh, $800. So 650 plus 130 is 780 Oh, shipping, I, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it was 800 bucks plus 130 moving forward. So there you have it. That's, that's how the numbers shake out in terms of the cost, uh, in terms of the speed tests. And um, there was something else. Yeah. No, that's, I guess we're going to wait and see from a reliability standpoint how it handles weather. Right now, the dish stands about knee high. And uh, maybe I'll uh, throw a picture up one day. But it, it's, it's small. It's about the size of a large pizza box standing on a small tripod about knee high. And it's sitting on the ground outside. There's no question your odds of in, uninterrupted signal will be better if it's a little higher up. So when it's not minus 30 outside, in fact, when it's like plus 20, <laughs> June, I'll go up on the roof and mount this to our, our, uh, our mast on the roof where the rest of the antennas are. Um, and it, it gives us a good opportunity to contrast the difference from the, the dish sitting on the ground to sitting 30 feet in the air. Um, the mast would be 10, 15, yeah, it'll be right up there, right around 30 feet, 25 to 30 feet in the air. And that can only make it better. Certainly not going to make it worse. So currently, uh, it's just sitting on the ground. That has been our experience so far. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, those of you that know how to reach me, go ahead. Shoot me a question in the comments if you like. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.